We are on day number seven of BNB. Follow me with Binance Coin. We're following it day by day, and the short trade has been activated. Yes, it's gone from three hundred and thirty dollars to around well, under three hundred dollars now, and we're gonna follow through with how to now manage the position. Yes, short term, how to manage the position because it's all about capital preservation before we can think about profits. So if you like today's video, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification if you don't know me by now. My name is Jiggy, the award-winning author of The Extraordinary New Venture Capital Opportunity, How to Invest Like a Pro. Been featured in the best-selling book, High Probability Trading Strategies, back in 2008, where I only used to focus on currencies, but now exclusive on cryptocurrency. So let's dive straight in. So yesterday's video was day six. We said a great opportunity to short BNB over the coming days, Binance coin likely to fall below 270. So we're keeping it very objective, very mechanical. And what we just said was, even though we're being patient for more of a longer trade, long setup, we said, look, there's a final one, two, three, four, five. It's gone below this. So a good trade setup is price going below here, go short and put your stop loss above here. Right, so that's your stop loss. Right, so we, we've now been triggered. So we're gonna now do a follow through on this. Now, before we do, I don't want to read a quote at the end of my videos, but today I'm going to read it right now because it's so, so relevant. It's chapter number two. It's from Warren Buffett. It says, rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. So we want to now really focus not on profit. We want to focus on capital preservation. If we're wrong about the market, how can we become risk-free lock in some profits. So even if the market goes on to make all time new highs, which is possible, can we still lock in profits? So that means we can live to fight another day. And in fact, we can live to fight as many days as we like because we're still making profit. So can we be wrong and guarantee profit? If you can do that, then you're just on the next level because you're able to do things that most people can't do. So I've just taken the data back to where we were looking at this. We're on an hourly chart. The daily momentum was bearish. We're looking for a short term well, short trade, short term, short trade, short term meaning like a few days that you're holding it for. And look at that, the market activated us in literally hours after the video. So what you want to do when you're looking at these markets is we want to look at what's the minimum expectation. So let's just now take the data up to today's date. It's just followed through. Look at this. The nice movement to the downside, nice movement to the downside. So that's literally from yesterday. So we're on day seven of Binance Coin, follow me. And what we said was here, the market's gone below this swing low. That's a good signal that we've got a top. Right, this, wait for the first pullback. That's a nice little correction. Go short and put a stop loss over here. So this is our risk exposure. And that you want to represent. This is where a lot of people go wrong as well. You want to represent anything from one to 5% of your trading account. 5% is quite aggressive, 3% uh, is quite common, 3 to 2%. Uh, a lot of people over risk. So even though this has gone in our favor, this is a really, really good trade setup that we had from yesterday and has been activated and we're short. And we want to always risk around 3% knowing that you might be wrong. So now we're focused on capital preservation. So we want to look at this in two fronts. What is our expectation on the, the bigger view? What, what, what do we expect if everything goes exactly to plan? And what should we anticipate as the minimum? And then how can we lock in some profits? So let's look at this. Let's just jump back into a daily chart. Okay, then in the top right hand corner, we can see the momentum is now bearish, as in the red line, the blue line's gone below the red. The price has now gone into the trading range of the wave A. So that's a good signal that this top is confirmed. Ideally, we want to see the price go below this wave below. And that would be a nice confirmation where we can remove this question mark and we're likely to go lower, right? So the actual bigger degree expectation from price, and we want to leverage that, is actually it go into this range, as we said a few days ago, right? So we want to really leverage that position. But we also want to be mindful that the market could just flip around and turn around like so. Anything can happen, right? So we want to play the odds. So now when we're going back to the hourly chart, we're going to do two things. First thing is, remember the quote, let's just read it again. Rule number one, Warren Buffett says, never lose money. And rule number two, never forget rule number one. So we, we are exposed right now. Exposed. What do we mean by that? 
Well, we've risked 3% of our capital. Let's just call it 3%. So what does that mean in English? So if you've got a trading account of, I don't know, let's just keep numbers simple. Let's say it's 100,000, right? Times that by 3%. But well, that's 3,000. So we've got 3,000 capital exposure, right? 3,000 capital exposure. Can we take that capital exposure down to zero in a logical, mechanical, calm, objective manner? In other words, non-emotional. So we, we don't want to get into the habit of going, okay, we risked three grand and we are currently, if we just look at this, running profit, as in paper profit, like literally we haven't exited anything yet. So we could still lose this. But right now the running profit would be a roughly, what's that? Uh, let's have a look. Let's go, or is that? Yeah, what is, what is that? That's uh, oh, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, five, so we got five, right? So it might be like 15 grand, 15 grand thereabouts. So for every 3,000 we've we've risked, it's done a 5x. So the running position is at approximately 12 to 15,000. That's quite significant, right? That's quite significant for your portfolio. That's you know, if you look at it from a portfolio size, that's 15 percent. But we don't want to rush this. We don't want to rush. We just want to be relaxed. We want to be calm because the bigger movement. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take this slow because this is where you know we separate the amateurs from the pros. Is the bigger movement if we just do it like this? What we're anticipating is that the market is likely, not guaranteed, is likely to go as far as at least this zone down here, around here, which is around $200, right? Now, if we look at that, what's the potential? The potential is, that's like a 22 times, right? 22 times, 22 times risk reward, so to speak. In other words, we risk 3,000 times that by 22, you know, 66,000, that's 66% if we held all of our position for the full move. But that's bad practice. What's good practice is we must now do our capital preservation part of our trade plan. So how is that, how's that gonna work? Well, first of all, when the market has entered you in and made a few very clear swing highs and swing lows, we can move our stop loss to break even. There's no reason for us to keep our stop loss over here. We want to move it to break even. So what we do is we simply, you know, you adjust it on whatever platform you're using. We're moving our stop loss to break even. I'm going to do it like this so you can see it like so. Let's just change the color. This is our stop loss. And then let's just change this to a green. This is our entry. All right, so we're break even, right? So if the worst case scenario happens now, let's say the worst case scenario that the market, I don't know, some news event happens and it just does that, which is always possible, you lose zero, right? So you're risk-free. So we've now applied in a practical fashion, rule number one, never lose money, and rule number two, never forget rule number one. Okay. So now do we just want to hold? Do we just want to hold until our price target is met? I go, no. What we want to do is look at the, so now, now, well, the entry point is very mechanical, right? We just went very mechanical. We got a trade signal, which was this low was triggered. It went below the low. It had a reaction to the upside. We went, okay, now go low, put a stop, go short, put a stop loss up there. Very mechanical, very objective. Now, when we now are in an active trade, it's now more business-like where we have to make some decisions. It's not as black and white, but it's pretty black and white. So we want to get a set of rules that is really, really clear. So first of all, how I like to do it is I like to separate my position into two. So let's just say we've bought, that like we said that example, 3,000. We're going to divide it into two. Right, we call it unit one and unit two. So we've got 1,500 as unit one. Unit one is all about locking in some early profits and assuming that we're wrong. Assume that we're wrong, that the market's going to do the minimum and then reverse and some other chart pattern's going to unfold. And then position two, the second 1500, is let's assume that we're right and we're gonna see BNB go to $200, right? So let's just focus on unit one first. 
Okay, what do you see with this chart structure over here now that it's unfolded? What do you see? Do you see any pattern in regards to Elliott waves and five wave counts? Well, what I see is we had this move down, what looks like a wave one. We had this move up, looks like a wave two. Looks like a very clean wave three, a wave four, and it actually looks like a wave five is unfolded. All right, so do we want to give this back to the market for our first unit? Because we're probably going to get some type of correction. We go, no. So we, I, we, one of our positions we want to have at least on this swing high, this wave four high over here. So we go, okay, let's just copy and paste this line over here. And we go, right, our unit one stop loss, half of our position we want to have at least over here. At least over here. So now we've locked in some profit. So now this is a guaranteed profitable trade, like guaranteed. So now if the worst thing happens and this gets stopped out and this gets stopped out, we're guaranteed a small profit. And this is the art and science of trading. When you're wrong, you can make a small profit, break even, or sometimes you take a small loss. And when you're right, we really, really ride that trend. But let's also now get really, really focused to go, okay, this looks like a really clean five wave structure to the downside. Can we do some Fibonacci time, so more price, price, and then we'll look at momentum. Are we actually approaching an end of wave five just on a micro degree? Well, let's just do an end of wave five target, where you measure wave one to three, projected from the wave four high. You know, this is one of the typical ratios, the three ratios that we want to be aware of is 38, 62, and 100%. Right? They're the main three. Right, and we've got those ranges over here. I just want to look at the ranges of the, these uh, bars. Okay, we can see this is a massive range over here. This is intraday data. I'm going to, with intraday data, we want to take this into consideration. On daily, daily action, we wouldn't take this into consideration. So what we're going to do also is we're going to do an external retracement. And we've got these two ratios down here. So it's just telling us that it's highly probable that in this range, and even maybe even in this range, we're likely to see a, a micro wave five. So for our first unit, we want to leverage this information and now trail our stop very tight to the market. Now remember, we're on a daily daily chart is our higher degree time frame. So if I if I just zoom out and get my daily chart top right hand corner, make this big on the top right hand corner, we go. We're anticipating three to five days sideways to down. So the daily chart is our higher degree time frame for this trade. And the hourly chart is the lower degree time frame. So now we've got these momentum reversals. I'm actually now going to change this indicator to the fast 8533. Let's just see, because it moves a bit faster. It's a bit more choppy, but you want to be aware of it. So what I'm going to do here, and yeah, these are the decisions that you need to make, right? So for unit one, remember unit one is insurance. It's We've already executed our insurance. We've done our minimum, right? We're risk-free and we've locked in a profit. But what else do you see over here? Well, on a micro, sub-micro degree, we see another sequence. So is there any reason to keep our stop loss above this swing high over here now that we are approaching this wave five zone? We go, no. So I am going to now make a decision to go, okay, this swing low would have been a stop loss. We move it here. Then the price has carried on going past here, so it's gone down here, then another move up, and then another move down. So now we are getting very tight to say, look, we're coming towards the end of a five-way sequence. Let's keep unit one, half of a position, really close to the market. I don't normally trade an, an hourly chart, but because you have to be in front of the computer, because you know these movements happen quite fast. But the same will be true on a weekly and a daily chart, and we'll see that later on when we get further along into the follow me, if BNB follows it unfolds as anticipated. So now we are guaranteed this much profit. Risk-free though, risk-free, guaranteed. When I say guaranteed, it means we've moved our stop loss to break even from up here to entry point on our full position. But then we've taken half of that position and trailed our stop loss right down to here. So it's a very significant move. It's gone from, what, $325 all the way down to you know, $300 stop loss, and the price is even below that as well. So there's no more thinking to be done. What we also are going to leverage, actually, let's just move back to the 13, just want to get a cleaner 
indicator here. We'll keep on the 13. What we're also going to say is every bearish reversal, if we're not stopped out on unit one, every bearish reversal, meaning that the momentum goes up some way and then goes back down, and then the blue line crosses below the red again, every time that happens, we are going to look at the price and see if there's a new swing high. Right? If there's a new swing high, in other words, because we don't know how far this is going to go. It could just keep going, or it could literally just reverse right now. We don't know that, right? And we want to know what we don't know, right? We want to know what we don't know. So if the price continues down, let's just say it continues down like so, and then it makes a movement to the upside, and then continues down again, then we just simply move our stop loss and we just trail it. And it's good practice to just trail your stop loss. So then we're also going to ask the question, all right, what do we do with our second unit? Second unit. But we don't need to focus on that too much today, right now. But I'll just talk about it briefly. The second unit is we're aiming for this bigger degree movement over here. If the market does unfold to finish off this bigger degree correction that we've been speaking about for the last seven days. And we may see some type of five wave structure on a larger degree. So unless there's new information with the larger degree time frame, which is now the daily chart, we want to allow the market space, breathing space to do its thing. And only really look closely when the momentum gets below this line over here. And this is referred to as oversold. Then we know the downside should be limited. And we should be coming towards an end or getting some type of reversal. And if that coincides with pattern and price, then we've got momentum, pattern and price telling us that we need to be hyper aware. And we also know, so let me just go back here. We also know, if I just zoom out for a second, just to remind us, we don't want to zoom out too much here, that we are potentially on some type of one, two, three, four. And this part here is what we trade in but five, and we're looking for an end of a major degree correction. So we want to be hyper aware of this. And the exit strategy for unit two is actually going to be the same as an entry strategy to go along for the larger degree move. So we covered a lot today. That was quite detailed. So just to summarize, we got triggered in yesterday, as we said, our short order, but we've now become risk-free. This is what many man don't manage to do. This is next level if you manage to become risk-free. Not only are we risk-free, we've guaranteed profit. Whatever happens, you know, anything can happen. We're guaranteed profit because our unit one stop loss is over here and our unit two is on break even, right? That's, that's just next level when it comes to risk management. So if you want to learn how to do Elliott Waves and Fibonacci, because we've really just applied pattern, momentum, and price. And those three coincided for a nice clean short opportunity it got triggered great and now we're just managing that position in the link below is my Elliott wave and fibonacci masterclass, and i cover it in detail how to count the waves in fives and threes typical corrections and typical ratios that you really really want to be aware of and more often than not they will unfold as we're seeing right in front of us so today is day seven of follow me on bnb tomorrow we will continue the journey with BNB day by day, because I just want to, you know, because sometimes when we're just doing different coins, is you don't really get the full picture of what's happening, and it's just calm, it's relaxed, it's objective, and we're not getting emotional. Because you know, if you've got a significant portfolio, we're literally 15, 20 percent up, and if you've got a hundred grand portfolio, that's 20 grand. If we've got a 10 grand portfolio, that's two grand, 1500 to two grand. And that can be quite significant in terms of percentage-wise. But we want to really, the bigger money is made in the bigger move. So we're in we're insurance mode right now. We're in risk management mode, capital preservation mode. And we've done a good job. It's a really, really good job of what we've done. And, you know, we want to get stopped out in that first position. So we're just now going, we don't know. So we just allow it. We just trial the stop loss. And then once that occurs, we go, right, now let's look at the market and go, what information do we have? Is there any reason to move our second stop loss on our second unit? If the answer is no, we go no. Now, now there might be, you know, big movement that we might, because what will typically happen is you get a five-way movement, 
and then some type of correction, normally three waves, and then a continuation to the downside, then we can consider moving the second unit and lock in some more profits and let's aim to lock in as much of the movement to the downside as we can. And it could be a really, really, really profitable trade. You know, short term, we probably won't compound on this one because it's only on the daily and the hourly. And then we'll look for long term setups for the longer term position as well that we'll look at. Woo! We covered a lot, right? So like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, BNB, follow me. Uh, day number eight tomorrow, day number eight. Let's finish on a quote. We're going to repeat the quote because repetition is the mother of all skill. So here we go. Warren Buffett, but we did a practical version of this today. A practical version of this today. Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget. Rule number one. All right, I'll see you tomorrow for day number eight. Follow me on Binance Coin, BNB. It's unfolding textbook. So hopefully you're now seeing the power of Elliott Wave combined with Fibonacci combined with momentum. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.